Hello everyone, my name is Ka Vang. I am a realtor with Creative Results located in Roseville, Minnesota. So you're here today because you want to learn more about interior decorating and staging. Now let me first be clear and say that there really isn't a right or wrong way when it comes to decorating because it's based on one's personal preference. So if you're able to pick up a few pointers from today's training, then that is awesome. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to talk about today is the difference between an interior designer and an interior decorator. A designer builds a project from the beginning, usually with an architect, to create a functional interior space. They have to consider the design aspects in a room, and for this reason they are knowledgeable about building codes. Furthermore, they do need official training such as degrees, licenses, and etc. to adopt the title. A decorator, on the other hand, is not involved with the design of space. Their primary focus is on furniture, decor, color, texture, and textiles of a room because their job is to capture the personality and the style of the clients and be able to express it to fit that space. So because of this, they don't need official training to get the title. There are many kinds of elements when it comes to design, but today I will be covering three which are space, shape, and color. The first element is space, and that is the area between objects in a room. In this before photo, it's hard to tell that this is a decent sized room because of the bulky furniture, the clutter, and the mess. The room also feels dark and small because of the walls and the blinds that's covering the floor to ceiling windows. Not only do the blinds take away the natural light of this room, it also takes away one of the best selling points, which is that beautiful view. It's hard to believe we're looking at the same room in this after photo, isn't it? Doing three simple things such as decluttering, cleaning the mess, and removing unnecessary furniture can make a huge difference. Painting the walls a lighter color and removing the blinds to let in the natural light instantly transform this room. Not only does it now look larger, it also feels brighter and more welcoming. Now this is a view to enjoy inside out. Here are five ways to make a room feel bigger. Painting your walls a lighter color because dark colored walls will only make shadows appear darker, which in turn makes the room feel a lot smaller. Keeping larger furniture off the ground. You can do this by adding legs to large furniture, such as the dresser in this picture. Large furniture has a tendency to make a room feel small. Adding legs to lift them up will give the room more air. The third way you can make a room feel bigger is by buying furniture to fit the scale of the room. This means opting for a sofa paired with a wingback chair or an armchair instead of that sectional that you love so much. The sofa with the chairs will still give you that cozy look that you're going for without compromising the ample seating space. Another way is to hang mirrors. The reflection of the mirror will make the room look extended. It will also allow light to bounce off the reflection to make the room brighter and appear larger. The fifth way is to have zero clutter. Besides organizing, you could also have zero clutter by getting multifunctional furniture pieces. For example, if you have a small living space, consider using a trunk. You can use the surface of the trunk as your coffee table and the trunk itself to store extra items such as throw blankets, pillows, books, and more. A key to maximizing use of space without compromising comfort is to avoid symmetry. Symmetry is not always bad because occasionally it can work in certain rooms. However, in a small room, symmetry can make the room feel cold, uncomfortable, and without any character. One thing I do to avoid symmetry in a room is to move furniture around until the room feels right. This photo was submitted by a member from the Facebook group Hmong Interior Designers and Decorators. The reason she submitted this photo 
was because she realized the symmetry did not work for this room, so she needed ideas from other members on how they would rearrange the furniture. This is what she came up with after other members' recommendations. Finding balance in a room is like having that hot chocolate with white marshmallows on a freezing winter night. The second element is shape, which is the solid structure of an object. We talked about the importance of balance in a room, and that carries over when we're talking about shape as well. A typical room has four walls, four corners. That alone makes the room feel boxy. So when decorating, it's important to keep that in mind and incorporate other shapes to balance. In the photo to the left, the sectional and the coffee table add to how boxy the room is. That's why it's important to incorporate other shapes and designs to balance it out, such as the rug and the round clock. The shape of the lamp and the design on the floor pillows can help take away how boxy the room feels also. The photo to the right also has great balance. The sharp edges on the chair and the fireplace can make the room feel boxy, but the round coffee table as well as the soft curved decor on the shelf all help create balance in this room. The third element is color. Color is extremely important because it sets the mood of the room and it has a strong influence on how people feel. One rule of thumb that I always use for myself and share with others is to dress your room the way you would yourself. For example, if you know the yellow pops against blue, you already know the yellow is going to be a great accent color when you're pairing it with blue and vice versa. As if deciding on one or two colors isn't hard enough already, having to mix and match even more colors to create something that's pleasing to the eye can be even more stressful. This is why the color wheel is extremely helpful. The color wheel allows you to see which colors will work with each other and which ones will work against each other. In the previous photo, we saw that yellow and blue work well when one is a primary color and one is the accent color. In this color wheel, we can see that blue and yellow are opposite of one another. When paired correctly, you get something like this. By being able to understand which color complements the other, the designer of this room was able to incorporate a multitude of colors while creating balance. Without balance, you might get something like this. You like pizza and you like ice cream, right? But would you mix them together and eat them? I didn't think so. Likewise, just because red, blue, and yellow may be three of your favorite colors, it doesn't mean you have to use all of them. Now that we have covered the basic fundamentals of decorating, let's move on to staging. When staging, it's important to know who you're representing, buyers or sellers. Buyers see what's in front of them. In other words, they see cosmetic flaws. If you're representing a seller, Advising them to paint their walls a neutral color could yield a greater return. According to the National Association of Realtors, otherwise known as NAR, 81% of realtors reported that staging helps buyers visualize. When representing buyers, first appearance is important. A cluttered home could easily turn away buyers. Therefore, let sellers know that a home that's free of clutter and freshly scented will make everyone happy. NAR also reports that 46% of realtors found that buyers were more willing to walk through the entire showing if the home showed well. Buyers are drawn to how the home is visually presented. They tend to see themselves living in the house with the seller's belongings. According to NAR, 45% of realtors reported that a home decorated tastefully positively impacted value. This is why it's important to you to stretch the seller's vision to see what the buyers see. Because buyers tend to see themselves living in the house with the seller's belongings, it's extremely important for you to advise sellers to depersonalize. Doing so will help buyers see themselves living in what could potentially be their home and not the seller's home. NAR states that 10% of realtors reported that a home that was decorated against a buyer's taste negatively impacted value.
There are two types of homes to stage, a furnished home and a vacant home. Each comes with their own pros and cons, but both are doable. When staging a furnished home, a pro is that you already have furniture to work with, especially large furniture such as couches. Many times, all you have to do is just rearrange the furniture, add extra lighting, and add additional decor to incorporate more color such as pillows, blankets, books, wall art, and more. A con to staging a furnished home is having to tell sellers what can stay and what needs to go. This means more work for the sellers, but the payoff will be worth it. In this before and after photo, some of the biggest changes include rearranging the furniture, decluttering, and putting the lamp in a proper place to create more lighting. Staging a vacant home Although some rooms are better left empty, other rooms benefit from staging. According to NAR, the top five rooms to stage are the living room, kitchen, master bedroom, dining room, and bathroom. Staging a vacant home is beneficial in that it gives buyers an idea how big a room actually is. This is especially beneficial for small areas. In this before and after photo, the vacant living area looks pretty small. You wouldn't even know if a couch would fit there or not. Because of the staging in the after photo, now we can see that it can comfortably fit a large size couch, a coffee table, and more. Staging this area has turned what could have been a bad mark on this house to a good one. Now that you have learned a couple of things about interior decorating and staging, what are some things you would do to change about this room? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. Alright. Do you see any of the suggestions that you made? It's alright if you didn't, because what's important is that now, you're starting to see and think like an interior decorator and stager. The fun for you has just begun. Let's recap what we've learned. 81% of realtors found that buyers said a staged house made it easier for them to visualize the property as a future home. 46% said buyers were more willing to walk through a home that they viewed online. 45% said that if a home was decorated to a buyer's taste, it positively impacted the value. On the other hand, 10% said that if the home was decorated not to the buyer's taste, then it negatively impacted the value and 5% made buyers more suspect of home features. On the seller side, staging is equally effective. Staged homes spent half the time of the market compared to non-staged homes. They also sold for more than 6% above the asking price. NAR found the sellers made their money back from staging. Staging investment is between 1 and 3% of the home's asking price. Sellers who staged usually saw an ROI of 8 to 10%. Staging also helps your photos stand out online. With 90% of potential buyers searching for homes online and 46% more willing to walk through a home that they saw online, it's clear to see that staging has a real positive impact on the sale of a home. Thank you so much for attending this training. I hope that you found it informative and worthwhile. I covered the basics of some of the topics, but if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at kavang at creativeresults.biz. Thank you for your time.